This is Twit. Well, this week we've got a video from Randy. Uh, he and I got together, um, where was that, CPAC in Seaside, Oregon here a while back, and he mentioned those uh, little $5 voltmeters that uh, were on sale there. Well, he finally did something with his, so let's take a look at that. So what are you looking for? I mean, you can't come to a ham fest without at least coveting something that they've got here. Oh, uh, found over the guy over here in the far. He had some little 12-volt uh, voltmeters. They were little uh, three segments, and the whole thing is behind the LED display for $5. So I thought I would fill everybody in a little bit more about these meters. I also received my July CQ magazine, and in there, Gordo had a little article about these, so let's take a look at them. The meters are actually very small. They're about the size of a quarter, and on the back is three connections. So you have VN, for your measurement pin, VCC to power the meter, and ground. Now you may connect VN and VCC together so you can power and measure from the same wire, and this will go up to 30 volts. If you break the connection between VN and VCC, you may power the meter separately and then be able to measure up to 200 volts DC. So here's my meter, and I've soldered a couple wires onto the back. Okay, I've now turned on my power supply, and uh, this is green, but it's really bright, so it's overpowering the camera. If I just pointed at my fingers here, you can see how much light is coming out of there. So I'm just gonna vary the power supply, and you can see it change here. So I can take it down. Okay, so it's a little below four volts. It starts to drop out. And I'm gonna bring it back up to about 12. So now I have the meter and my fluke hooked together and they're there matching. And uh, let's turn the voltage down, just pick a couple voltages. There it's off by one digit. Oh, there it changed, it's right on the edge. So the spec is plus minus 1% plus two digits, whatever that means. So I think if it's probably within the tenth digit there, it's probably pretty good. So it appears to be tracking pretty closely to my fluke. Okay, now the fluke meter is measuring current. So it's 12 milliamps on the fluke for 12.5 volts. And as I vary the voltage around, let's see, drop it down to eight volts. You can see there, now the current's about 10 milliamps. The draw on the meter is somewhere between 10 and let's say 13 milliamps. What I've decided to do is do another Altoids project. And so what I'm gonna do is that I've cut a hole here in the back and the meters, I'm gonna mount the meter into the, um, the hole here. And I cut it out, drilled a hole and used my nibbler tool. So that just pops in there. There's a couple screw holes, but I don't have any screws small enough to hold that. And I'm going to mount a switch over here on the side so I can turn it on and off. Okay, I have this switch and I'm going to just pass it through the hole. Hold that and put the nut on. I'm just gonna leave the nut flush on the outside and I have a little uh, 5 16 wrench. Okay, I mounted the meter in my vise here, and I'm gonna take off the, the wire that I had installed on here. Tin the ends of my wires here, so I'm going to, and I bent the red one over at a, about a 90 degree angle here, so I can, oops, attach that to, to both of those pads. Right, cool, and it's on there, and the black wire, uh, just, Stick that on. Okay, now I'm going to take the other end of the wires and connect them to the switch. I'm going to connect both the positive and the negative lead to the switch here. So, uh, bent the ends over and I placed it through there. I'll bend it down. Here we go. Okay, we have the black hook wire on. Now let's get the red through there. There we go and bend it down. Now come in here and solder these. There's the black. Okay, now on the other side of the switch is my longer red wire pair, red black pair of wires. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna connect those to the top lugs on the switch. So I'll pass the, uh, and the black. 
Okay, so I have the wire soldered to the meter, two wires soldered to the switch. I'm just going to uh, take the meter and stick it down through the hole here. The hole's kind of snug, so it'll probably hold it here. And the wire's fighting me a little bit. There it goes. It's in there, and I'm just going to push the wire down to the side. Now what I want to do is put a power pole on the other end of this wire. Okay, I have my power pole hoods and my pins. I'm going to try crimping these. So the way this works is that the tail goes all the way down. I'm going to start on the crimp here and so it doesn't slide around. I'm going to put the red wire in there. goes in with the tail goes down into the die and put the wire in there and start it make sure everything stays put and the wires in there and give that a crimp there we go much easier this time and okay now to put the wires in and to make these up these have if you've never used these they have little tongue and grooves to slide them together and I can never remember what the saying is, right on red, down, right, back, rear. I have a commercial four-way adapter here, so what I just double check is that, okay, it's gonna go in that way, and the black will be this way, so, and I'm going to slide the two together. Look in the front, you can see the tab, part of the metal work in there, and you want these to slide in so that the round is facing up away from that so they go in and if the wire was really stiff you could just push them in until they snap so push it in click and there's the black one if i look in there it'd be hard to see but the round edge is up for storage and travel i can coil up the wire And store it inside the uh, the case here. I want it to jump out, so it's all self-contained. And then uh, when I want to use it, I can just pop this open and uh, pull it out. I've cut a notch in the end here. Not very sophisticated, or a bunch of real good protection, but place to sneak the cord out. Plug it in and hit the switch. And there we go. You can buy these meters from several places. In Gordo's article, he mentions Radio City. Um, at the Hamfest at Seaside, it was just for fun was selling these. And I've seen them at Adafruit and probably other vendors. So, 73, it's Randy, K7AGE.